challenge time. Wait. Again! Again with this! Alright, what's going on now? Hey! Invisible ink? Can I make art out of that? <laughs> I don't know. I'm gonna find on out. I asked myself a very simple question. Can I make art with invisible ink? And if so, why would you do that? Well, I'm here to answer both those questions. Because I have, right here in front of us, four fluid ounces of invisible ink. This is by Optimize. This is a black light reacting ink, and it's pretty generic invisible ink. You can get this for about $11.99 on Amazon. I also picked up a $10 little black light. Now, for those of you who aren't familiar with the concept of invisible ink, it's actually pretty simple. The ink itself actually is basically like colorless and tr almost translucent, but when you shine a black light on it, it actually reacts really cool by glowing a beautiful shade of Blue. Now, one thing that's going to be really interesting when making this piece is that my camera doesn't like to pick up the blue light because of how bright my set has to be. So there's going to be a lot of B footage, meaning that this is going to take a lot longer to film, edit, and make. So instead of asking you to like the video if you enjoy it at the end, I'm going to ask you now. If you enjoy this, please leave a like because this is going to be a lot of work. But I'm really curious if we can make art out of this invisible ink. So let's get started with our Batman sketchbook. Now I actually have quite a few different questions that I really want to have answered in our experiments before we can make our piece of art work. Our two main concerns, because I'm pretty sure this ink is going to work well with a brush, but I'm really curious to see how this ink is going to react with the dip pen. It's a very thin ink and it smells very alcohol heavy, so I'm wondering is that actually going to affect the nibs? Like is the nibs just not going to be able to pick it up? It's not going to stick as well? And on top of that, I have some marks that I made last night, different types of inking equipment. So we got Sharpie, Subaru, Master, Tombow, Accurate. Prisma, Copic, and some random ones. I'm really curious to see how they're going to react because how they react with this ink, which has had plenty of time to dry, that will also affect how we're going to ink our piece. So we got quite a few questions that we need to answer. And our first one is going to be with a brush. Yeah, that works actually really, really well. Okay, so worst comes to worst, we can use a brush for coloring everything in. I'm really curious to see how this is gonna work with an actual dip pen. So this is gonna be really, really interesting. But let's just see if we can make a line. Oh, we can. We can totally make a line with a dip pen. It's not the best line, it's very, very thick, and I'm getting very short lines. It's not that smooth too, not smooth at all. So that's really gonna affect how we're gonna be doing this piece too. Can we use a quill nib? Oh, okay, I really gotta try the quill nib now, I'm really curious. Yes, we can. That is so cool. I am noticing that when we make our line with the quill nib, the end tends to bubble up a little bit. Not so much there because I was a little more careful, but if I'm not, I can really get it to bubble. That's pretty interesting. I was really worried because of how thin the alcohol was that it wouldn't stick, but no, it's actually not that bad. Now for the next important step. This is the one I'm the most worried about, and that's how these inks are actually going to react with other inks, because if it causes bleeding and blending, that's gonna be a huge problem. So after giving this thing about an hour to dry, because I totally didn't spill this all over my pants floor and desk and had to desperately clean everything, I'm a professional after all, I could definitely say that Sharpie, Suguru, and Accurate definitely bled the most, surprisingly so. Though not everything Suguru made, it was really just their fine liners that really bled. Everything else was fine. Master was okay, Tombo was okay, Prisma, Copic, and Random were okay. That has definitely impacted how I'm gonna be inking this piece because I know which inks to use. I can also say that after seeing how the Invisible Ink reacts on top of the black ink, that's also going to change how I'm going to ink this piece as well. So what we're going to do and what I think would be actually the best part moving forward is to plan with all this in mind. We know that we can use the brush, we know we can use our dip pen. I have an idea on how I can incorporate all this into a piece that will take advantage of the properties of the invisible ink and actually allow myself to create a piece that will be visible both with the lights on and with the black lights on. So I think we know what we're doing now. So the only thing left to do is to do the illustration. So will that time lapse? 
The inking process for this piece was very enjoyable. I mostly ended up using a Tombow to do most of my line work and then broke out a Pigma to actually do my cross hatching. For areas of complete black where the ink would touch, I had decided to use a Master Micro set as that was the one that worked best. Then for any area that needed to be solid black that didn't touch the invisible ink, I simply just used a Sharpie. Well, it was fun and all I had to do was really tighten out my pencil work and make it look good, which was very enjoyable. I actually found the most challenging part of this art was actually coming up with the background as after inking him, I decided to do one. I ended up settling on the inside of an alleyway to create the illusion of depth and to help make Poldare more of a focal point despite already being one. The original texture on the wall I had kind of looked more like feathers than a wall, so I decided to scrap it and take my sharpie and go through it. Since I knew the invisible ink was going to go in these areas, I decided to ink around that and that helped create a shadow and a glow effect that really helped to add that sense of depth to the piece. The other challenging part of this artwork was actually texturing the floor. I decided to just use hatching going one direction. That helped create the illusion of depth, motion, and draw your attention again to Poldare. Wherever his feet touch, I create a solid line to show his shadow, which again helped to make it look more real and give it depth. When it came to using the visible ink, it was actually very easy and simple. All I had to do was break out a double clamp which held my flashlight for me. That let me work hand-free on the artwork. After my dip pen was ready, I started with very small pieces to make sure I was getting the groove of it. The ink lines were thicker than I was used to, so I had to really work at it to get used to it. But after that, I started working on the major areas and found it very enjoyable. I expected to have a bigger challenge, but at the end of the day, it was probably the most simple and less stressful piece of the artwork. I think I've successfully answered the question I asked. You can indeed make awesome artwork out of invisible ink. Seriously, this piece looks amazing. And with the UV light, it just looks straight up magical. I love how this piece came out. Easily in my top 10 favorite pieces of the year. Now I already asked you guys to like and subscribe and I ain't gonna do that again. However, I am curious about two things. What do you guys think of the artwork, areas I could improve in or areas that you like? And while you're down there, also let me know if you guys want me to make more artwork with invisible ink. Making this piece, I've actually gotten the inspiration for three other pieces that we can make and I think it'd be really cool. If you guys want to see that, we will definitely bring that up on the production schedule. Also worth mentioning, if you guys are going to make artwork with invisible ink, this stuff is really cheap. I recommend it. And on top of that, this is a really cheap flashlight. It cost me about 10 bucks. Do be careful and keep in mind that this stuff is going to get everywhere. And I mean everywhere. It's spilled on my desk, my pants, my carpet, my mat, and the carpet over there. There's even some on my laptop and I had some on my camera that I had to carefully clean. So it was a little stressful. With all that said, this is a fun and definitely interesting ink. It's really not meant for drawing but you know what? That's the whole point of art, to make things that are really cool, unique, and interesting, and explore the medium in such unique ways. To me, that's part of what art is, and as someone who's a huge fan of traditional comic books, always love to put a modern spin or just a unique twist on it, and this is definitely a unique twist. And remember, I'm J-Rod of Balbrawl Productions. I draw the power and my own soul.